Good morning, today is Wednesday and I've come back to Old Jack Station. So here I am at Jaffa Gate, the entrance to the old station. Welcome back to Gap Year. In January 2020, I travelled with my mum to Israel, where the Menorah Choir were doing a tour. I spent some time in Tel Aviv before travelling to Jerusalem and then up the coast towards Haifa and beyond. In part two, I'll visit the city of Haifa. I'll then continue up the coast to the old city of Akko, or Acre, the city steeped in history, including the Crusades. I'll then visit the grottos of Rosh Hanikra on the border with Lebanon, where my dad spent a year on a kibbutz, where you can find a cable car and a disused railway. I'll then head inland for a few days to stay with some relatives before returning once again to Herzliya and Tel Aviv. Good morning YouTube, today is Wednesday. I've woken up here in Haifa, where I'm going to spend a full day exploring the city. Uh, I'm starting off with the Israeli Railway Museum. To get here I've hopped on the bus. The buses here are sort of bus rapid transits. They're kind of, they're sort of like mimicking trams in a way. I imagine it's significantly cheaper, but it seems to do the job pretty well. Let's go to the Railway Museum. So here I am in the Israeli Railway Museum which also seems to be just over the fence from a depot although this train is still a train that's in service in Israel in general I don't know why this particular unit's here it's, uh, it's, an, it's a Danish train, an IC3 unit I was on one of these just a few days ago I wasn't expecting to see coaches from the London South Western Railway here, was I? And this train on the left is a British Rail Mark II carriage. Let's explore the Carmelit subway.
So after a spot of brunch, some fried bread or something like that, uh, up at the top end of the Carmelit subway, now walking down the street to go find the Bayerit Gardens. Should be just down here. Meanwhile, I have a fantastic view over the city of Haifa. We really are quite far up. It's quite a steep funicular line, that. are the terraces of the Bahay Gardens, which are supposed to provide a route down to that golden dome building down there, which is the shrine. But for some reason, this gate here is locked and you can't get through. So you can come down here and see it, but then you've got to go back up and round to get to the bottom, which is annoying. I'm just on my way towards the shrine, walking down the road, I've just stopped to pop my head into what's called the Sculpture Gardens. I can see where the name comes from, it's a garden full of sculptures. It's a lovely little park, with a lovely view. I think I like this part of the world very much. So after much searching I found the lower gardens, which are equally spectacular and worth visiting. And from here you can go inside the shrine, the golden domed building, but only before 12. So I missed it by about half an hour, which is a shame, but never mind. Let's go to the cable car. to the bottom, to the sea. And you step off the cable car and you get your toes wet. Clandestine Immigration and Navy Museum, which is all about, well, the Navy and also the Jewish immigrants to Israel, again, in the, mo mostly in the aftermath of the Second World War. And this ship apparently is the only remaining ship that carried Jewish immigrants from this period. It was converted from a British tank carrier. That must have been quite an undertaking to make it fit for passengers.
train at Accra but it's nowhere the station's nowhere near the old city and the useless ladies in the ticket office don't know what bus to get from here or maybe they just don't under, didn't understand what I was asking it doesn't matter I have to try and find my own way there's a bus stop over there with a bit of luck they'll have a map so I did what my dad would probably do in this situation and just hop on a random bus and hope for the best and it worked. <laughs> so here I am, slightly closer to the old city of Accra. Accra. Well, it took me a while, but I finally seem to have found the old city walls of Accra. Or possibly, this looks more like it was a moat at one point. in Gita have fallen ill so I won't be staying with them tonight and there's plenty of stuff to see and do here in Accra so I decided to spend a night here I'll do Rosh and Ikra tomorrow instead so that gives me all afternoon to explore the city which is good because as I said there's loads to do let's start with the fortress So this is the Turkish bathhouse, which is surprisingly unimpressive from the outside. I'm sure it's wonderful from the, from the inside, but it's not included in the big combination ticket. So I won't go in there, but I'm going to go in here instead, which is the Turkish bazaar. At some point, I'll also go to the Templars Tunnel, which is right on the other, other end of the old city. The afternoon is still young. to the Templar Tunnel, which is just down here. I wasn't quite sure what I was getting myself into. <laughs> Beware, low ceiling. You don't say. Alright, don't come here if you're claustrophobic, because that is a small tunnel. A bit easier to crawl. Just about tall enough for me to walk through. So here I am at the other end of the Templars Tunnel. And again, I find myself by the sea. And there's the lighthouse. So it would be a lovely day to just wander around along the sea. But it's not, because the weather is cold and windy. I think 
I'll go back down and through the Templars Tunnel now, just because I've paid the ticket, so I might as well walk both ways. YouTube. I'm here in Echo. I'm on my way to Rosh Hanikra, which is the kibbutz where my dad spent most of his gap year working on uh, <coughs> picking fruit and operating the cable car. I will go and see the cable car. There's also the grottos, the caves, uh, which are literally just at the corner of the coast and the Lebanese border. And you can also go and see the, where the tracks of the railway line used to continue north from Naharia into Lebanon and they pass through Rosh Hanikra. You can go and see the border with Lebanon from the old train tracks, which should be very interesting. But obviously because the train is no longer operating, you have to get there by bus. at Naharia but the timings on Google Maps do not match up with reality so the supposed 12.05 to Rosh Hanikra uh, either it's not correct or if it is correct I've missed it so I need to figure out what to do next So this is Naharia station, the end of the line on what was once the route to Lebanon. What I love is that you can quite clearly see where the railway used to continue. There's that sort of just gap there with the trees. So here I am at Batset Junction, a small little roundabout. Now I've got a 20 minute walk to Rosh Hanikre. We are now very, very close so that in fact I can see, and I've got a proper border fence, you can see it on the top of that hill, the border with Lebanon. You can also see lots of, uh, lots of hints of the Israeli military, even more than usual, which is saying something. And these, I think, are bananas. There's always the fantastic story about the bananas, which we've heard a million times, that my dad was mainly picking pomelos, uh, but when the bananas needed picking, everybody picked the bananas. And there was once an occasion where he chopped down a banana plant only to find a tarantula uh, hiding inside the stalks, because they seemed to like it there. And so everybody had to go and kill it with a machete while he ran in the opposite direction. I'm hoping I won't encounter any tarantulas today. The other thing my dad did was work on this cable car, which I'm about to ride. So a lovely view here of the sea. And up there you can see a very imposing border fence. I've also been told the last bus to Nahar back to Naharia le uh, leaves at about four o'clock, which is in just over two hours. So I'd better take care not to spend too long, or I might get stranded here, because obviously it's Shabbat. You know, God forbid you have a bus network that functions seven days of the week. It's worse than the UK. To the cable car. So 
So the first cable car I've ever seen, which doesn't loop at each end, with string loops, but the cable cars do not. It sort of sits here in a bay. I'm guessing it works like a funicular. One goes up, the other one goes down, and then they swap directions. <laughs> I've just realised that this tunnel and that tunnel, this is probably the old rail route I'm standing on now. Definitely worth definitely going to go take a look at that but first I'm going to take a look at the grottos which unlike these tunnels are not man-made I assume just read that there are fruit bats here as well takes me back to A-level geography, this, and um, GCSE geography, and year nine geography, where over and over again we learned the features of the coastline, the arch, the cave, the stacks, and the stumps. And there they all are, in real life. Now I'm walking back towards the cable car, but before I go back up, I'm gonna go take a look at the train tunnels, because, obviously, so this is the old railway line that once linked Lebanon and Israel. It was built, it's not, it not that old, it was built as a military railway during World War I, and so it only saw service for a very short amount of time. Pretty ballsy place to put it, to be honest. It's like, it's like Dawlish. <laughs> it's just literally right up against the sea. What, we're, what I'm now looking at is the border with Lebanon. You can see those boys over there. Skinny boys, they're border boys, and they mark where the border between Israel and Lebanon stretches out to sea. There's also a navy ship over there, leasing the border. So this handy information sign over here tells me that it was built not during the First World War, but the Second World War. So it actually opened in 1942 lasted till 1948, a grand six years of operation, and apparently it did never carry passengers after all. So that's quite a lot of engineering <laughs> work that's gone into building this tunnel that only was used lightly for six years. So it looks as though you can exit here. I'm guessing this is an exit only, not an entrance, and by the looks of the buggies and the bikes, Ah, so I think what a lot of people do is they come here, they hire a bike, and they cycle along the disused railway path. back at the bus station at Naharia for the last bus to the small little kibbutz a few kilometres away has long since gone since Shabbat is coming in so I'm getting picked up from here instead 
Well, it's been a fun day. <laughs> you ruined it. Well, today seems like the perfect day for a three kilometer walk. I'm so glad I came to Israel. The weather's really nice here. Good morning, today is Monday. I've been here at the Kibbutz Gaton for a few days, not doing all that much. I'm with, staying with relatives, not the relatives I was originally planned to stay with because they're still quite ill. They're in a different kibbutz nearby, see the different relatives. So really for the last two days I've been sort of lying around and doing nothing. But today I'm walking a few kilometers along the main road to go and see a neighboring kibbutz which has an old fortress. So here it is, the Yehiam Fortress. Let's have a look around. Up and up and up. And up, 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 and wow, what a view. So it's Wednesday, it's, I'm here in Herzliya, uh, I don't think I'm going to go into Tel Aviv today, I've just decided to use the rest of my day. Since it is suddenly sunny after days of endless rain, the sun has come out, I'm just going to walk down the beach towards Herzliya Harbour. I don't think I've been to the harbour before, I know this beach, at least uh, from the last time I came here, which was a good 10 years ago, but it definitely brings back memories of walking down to the beach. Back when, it was <clears throat> back when it was warm enough to actually swim in it. I'm not going to be doing that today. So it's Thursday, I managed to come make my way back into Tel Aviv uh, just before it gets dark. It's my last day here 
my last evening, so I'm going to try and make the most of it and go find the markets. The ones where I got lost when I was four. I'm trying not to get lost again, although I can't get separated from my parents this time because they're not with me. Uh, and then I might just go get a drink somewhere. <laughs> Gurian Airport, about to board this, the Wizz Air flight to Budapest. So my stint in Israel comes to an end, <clears throat> and the next phase of my gap year begins. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.